Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, we're going to get started with Strapi 5, a headless CMS that allows you to create an API where you could enter content data for any of your projects that you want to have. Today's video, we're going to take a look how to set Strapi 5 up, how to create our first collection type, and how to make a get request to get our data via Postman. And the reason that I want to do this is because I'm starting a new project that I'm personally working on where I'm going to build the same project with three different frameworks, Astro, Next.js, and Remix. And I want to have a unifying backend that I could use with all those three projects. And that is why I chose Strapi. So without any ado, let's jump right into it. Strapi is a headless CMS that allows you to manage all your user content while creating endpoints that you could query from your front end. This saves you a lot of time and allows you to build full set applications really quickly. We could get started by running npx create Strapi app at latest. This will set up our project in its current version, which is version four. But I want to be a little bit more adventurous. So we are going to try to get early access to Strapi 5, which is due to be released at some point at the end of September. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to click on try Strapi 5. Instead of copying the whole command, I'm going to go ahead and just grab the front part so we could see some of the options that we have available to us. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in and we're going to call this Strapi 5 and click enter. What's cool is that you could host Strapi easily with Strapi Cloud, but that's not something that we need at this moment. And you could also self-host Strapi if you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click skip. And here is the most important question. Do we want to use TypeScript? Since everybody in the world is starting to use TypeScript, I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. You could also point your project to a SQL database or Postgres database. In our case, to keep things simple, I'm gonna use SQLite and click enter. This is gonna go ahead and set up our project. Once everything is installed, you could see the commands that are available to us. We're going to start with npm run develop, or in my case that I'm using yarn. First thing you wanna do is make sure that you CD into your project and we're going to run yarn develop. We could navigate to localhost 1337 and we're going to be prompted by creating our first admin user. Go ahead and fill this out. Enter your name, email, Bratslavsky at strapi.io and a very secure password since this is local monkey1234 exclamation point would be fantastic and click let's start. And here we are. Now that we have our Strapi project running, we are able to add our content types that we will have access via API endpoints that we could access by our front-end application. And before we continue, you could always find more help in our Strapi documentation. Here, if you click get started, it's going to take you to our documentation site. And because we're using Strapi 5, which is the release candidate, you could click this link here, which is going to take you to the documentation. What's awesome, we have this ask AI question, which allows you to ask questions about about current features in Strapi 5. For instance, what is the difference between entity service and document service? And if this doesn't make sense, that is okay. You're going to learn about it as we continue. But in Strapi 5, we no longer using entity service, but we're using document service. And here, we asked AI about the difference and here it kind of talks about what are the changes, what are the differences. And what's awesome, not only does it give us the answer, it's also going to go ahead and give us the reference where we could reference the topic farther. For instance, if I want to learn more about the document service that we're using in Strapi 5, I could go ahead and click this link. And here I have the documentation where I have all the needed resources to help me have a smooth Strapi 5 experience. So definitely utilize the documentation. Now back to our homepage, we could do a quick tour where all of our magic is going to happen. Here, this is our homepage where we have a guided tour to get you started with your first collection type. We'll come back to here in just a minute. Here in our content manager, this is where you're gonna see all your collection types and single types available to you once you create them. By default, you have a user collection type that has already been created for you. Here is our media library where you're going to see all your stored images. And here's the content type builder where all the magic happens. This is what we're going to use to create our first collection type. Now, taking a look at the settings, there's a lot of different settings here, but we're going to take a look at the most important part here for now under users permissions here. If I click roles, you have your authenticated permissions or your public permissions where you're able to give permissions to your API endpoints. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to create a collection type, which is going to show up here, where then we could either make it publicly available or only available to our logged in users, but we'll take a look in just a minute. So back to our homepage, let's go ahead and click this button, create your first content type. We're going to be moved to our content type builder. So I'm going to create a new collection and I'm going to call it post. I'm going to click continue and our post is going to have a titled field and we're going to keep it short text under advanced settings you have other additional items for instance you could make this a required field unique field for now i'm going to keep it as is i'm going to go ahead and click another field and we're going to call it content i love markdown so i'm going to go ahead and choose this rich text markdown editor and i'm going to call this content and now we're going to add another field. Every blog post needs a slug, which needs to be unique. So I'm going to go ahead and use this UI ID, and I'm going to create a field called slug, and it's going to be tied in to our title. And finally, we want our blog post to have an image. So I'm going to go ahead and select this media. I'm going to call it image, and I'm only going to want one image and under advanced settings i'm only going to give permission to allow only images and here i'm going to click finish and here we now have our collection type i'm going to click save and now i'm going to navigate back to our content manager where we're able to add our first post so let's go ahead and do that now i'm going to click create a new entry i'm going to go ahead and paste it in fantastic what's cool is you have the preview mode that shows how your Markdown gets rendered. You could also have a, a extended side-by-side -side view, which I think is kind of awesome. And let me go ahead and move the title to the title. And before we publish, let's go ahead and generate our slug. And next, let's go ahead and add an image and add it here, browse files. I think I moved it to my desktop. Here we go. Upload a new asset to library, click finish. And now that we have our blog post, we're going to go ahead and click our publish button. Now that we have our content, we could navigate to settings and under users permissions and roles, we need to give permissions to the API. Since our blog post is going to be publicly accessible, I'm going to go under the public setting here and I'm going to select the post and I want to have the ability to find all the posts and the single post and click save. What's awesome here, you could see the endpoint that we need and basically we need to make a post request to our localhost 1337 at API post, and we're going to be able to get the data. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So we're going to make a new HTTP request, and we're going to make it to HTTP at localhost 1337 to our API posts, and we're going to pass a flag that's going to populate our image. We'll talk more about this as we continue this series and getting started with Strapi 5 because this is not going to be just the only video, but let's go ahead and make our get request and boom, here you see our content, including our blog post, our slug and our image data. And that's very awesome. We have a working API that literally took us a couple of minutes to set up. In this video, we took a look how to easily get started with Strapi 5. This is only the first video in the series, so make sure that you tune in to the next video. In the next video, we're going to take a look how to set up our first page, which is going to have our website's landing page data. And we're going to continue build on to that. If you're wondering how to implement these features in your front-end application, at the same time as building this tutorial, I'm going to be creating three different projects in Remix, Next.js, and Astro to show you how you could use multiple frameworks with your Strapi instance. So I'll see you in the next one.